Oh wait, our videographer is here. Our guided video is here. And he he was the only one who emailed me. Okay, we're about to get started. If everyone could please sit down. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, everyone. If you could take your seats. Um, my name is Claire Tiscornia, and this is Karen Kelly. We are the chairs for the ninth grade networking group. Um, our, the networking you'll see when you get your emails, we have certain meetings during the course of the year, about three or four, and it just really speaks to ne um, the issues for ninth graders. So if you have a freshman and you have questions, be sure to come to these networking meetings. The next one is in October, and that will be answering all the frequently asked questions you may have. In December, we have one on um, midterm test prep as well. So keep an eye out for that. We hope to see you at all of them. I'd like to introduce our PFA co-presidents, Ann Whitaker and Jody O'Donnell. Hi, welcome. We're so happy to see all of you, especially if this is your first meeting at the high school. Welcome to the high school. Um, we will be very diligent about speaking in the microphone. All of these meetings are on the website, but you, um, your voice isn't picked up if you're not speaking into the mic. So if you have questions, then if you guys could be sure to repeat the question, that is helpful for those who can't be at the meeting. So Jody and I are the lucky ones that are the PFA co-presidents this year. We're so excited. And um, we wanted to just welcome you all and give a little bit of a plug for our events. There is a trifold calendar. It's on the table over there. Please pick one up. This is very handy, sturdy. You can tape it on the inside of a cupboard. And it really is a useful tool to, that shows you all of the meetings throughout the year. So for those of you that are new, we have general PFA meetings that are the second Wednesday of every month, and it's for all the parent community. There's a variety of topics. They're outlined here, just a special plug for the October one. It is, well, the first one is next week, September 11th. Bill's gonna talk a lot about the school, answer all of your questions. And um, the October 16th one is a special topic. Um, understanding the teenage brain, the keys to improving and challenging a challenging relationship at a challenging time of parenting. So we are bringing a special speaker. Please come to that one. Um, and I'm just going to speak a little bit, hopefully, into the microphone, um, as Anne told me to do. Um, this year, we are embarking on a new campaign called The Future Begins Here. Um, the purpose of this campaign is to raise awareness of all that the PFA does and hopes to continue to do. Um, we are, um, quickly, I just wanted to go through, we, you should have gotten in the mail, but it's just worth mentioning some of the great items that the PFA has donated that directly impact the classrooms. Um, for instance, and there is a long list, so I won't go through them, but I think it's worth raising awareness. We have, we donate equipment and furniture like robots, microphones for the performing arts department, um, the cafe furniture that you see out in the entryway, a more casual space for the students. There's patio enhancements. We've provided the tables, umbrellas, um, there's signage throughout the school that really improves. Hopefully, open house will help you find your kids' classrooms because it's not easy. Um, the mats, the water fountains. Um, what else, Anne? We fund the, the clubs. We support all the student clubs, like the Model UN and the debate team. Um, we host events throughout the year, like Safe Driving Week, Career Night, which is every other year and is a wonderful event. Um, in the classrooms, we've donated fish tanks to the special ed department, where they're now learning about marine life. We've brought in Shakespeare organizations to perform Romeo and Juliet for the students to make that a little more interactive and not quite so hard to read. The list goes on. So I hope you'll go onto our website and take a look at that and just try to realize all that we as parents can do to continue to build on this. 
Um, Because we are in a school that is great as it is. We are fortunate to have a principal and assistant principals and faculty who continue to look to improve. They continue to come to us with great ideas. Status quo is is not enough. We keep trying to move ahead, and we want to be able to execute on all of that for them. So we hope you will join the PFA. I know many of you already were this morning. Thank you so much. And we'll consider a donation to our campaign, which will be going on for the next month or so, and then we won't ask again. Um, So there's no gimmicks here. We're just looking to support our, our budget for the year and to do some more. So if you can do it today, you'll save the lines next week at Open House, where the rest of the school might be doing it. Or we will also be um, having tables set up next Wednesday morning. You can pick up your directories. Um, and just a word on open house, it is busy. It is crowded if it's your first year and parking is crazy. So just be ready. <laughs> um, so that is it. I'm going to, for one second, have Sue Morse come up and just speak just about slobs to make sure the boy parents are aware of that. Thank you, and welcome, everybody. Um, so I'm here to talk about the Service League of Boys. It's also known as SLOBS. Um, so we're one of the biggest clubs in the high school for sons and their parents to get involved in. We're a philanthropic organization. We support over 30 different organizations around town. Um, you know, you can go and play poker with people at the um, schoolhouse. You, we help fill backpacks for filling in the blanks, midnight run. We do everything. We help out the fall fair, the lobster fest. It's a really great way for boys to get out there and get involved in the community. Um, and it doesn't look so bad on their resume. Um, so we have a new member meeting September 18th at 7 p.m. right here. We have our first general meeting for everyone September 21st at 2.30 in um, the cafeteria. You can sign up on our website, which is www.newcanaanslobs.org. And I'm going to put a whole bunch of these with the meetings and contact information over on the table for the boy moms. So, all right, thanks. Bill? Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say hello. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Bill Egan. I'm the principal here. Uh, I know this isn't my meeting, but you guys are freshman parents. I wanted to stop in and say hi and just say thank you to all of you. This is truly the best high school in the state of Connecticut, maybe the country. Um, but honestly, a big portion of that is because of you, the parents. You work so hard to make this a better school. You're constantly giving of yourselves, volunteering, and being active in the community. So I can't thank you enough. And most importantly, you send us your kids, which are so talented and more importantly kind. They really are. These are the nicest group of kids around. They're always thanking teachers coming out of classrooms. It's truly a wonderful thing to to see. A big plug for next week. You know, I'll tell you a little bit of a funny story. When I first came here, this is my fifth year now. So my first year I came, the freshman meeting was, was very well attended. So it was just, just like this, probably maybe 30 or 40 people more. And then the welcome back coffee came. And there was literally 200 people in the room. At the time, the superintendent said, you know, you just have to be prepared. When you come, there's going to be a lot of people. I was stunned. It was literally standing room only. That many people came. Each year, it's been a little bit less. And I think last year, there was probably about this many people. So my plug to all of you is come to my welcome back message. Um, you know, truthfully, they were saying before I'm old hat. I'm like, I don't think I, hopefully I never get old. But, but I hope you all come. Um, and uh, it truly, this is a special place. Uh, next week, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we're looking forward to doing this year. Uh, you've seen some of that in my emails coming home. Hopefully, you guys look at the weekly updates we send home on a regular basis. Uh, they're usually fun. We usually have some videos in there as well, but informational too. So I hope that you look at that. And uh, without further ado, I will turn it over to Christy and Cindy, who have tons of wonderful in- information to give to you. So, but thank you all. I'll try and be back here for the end of your meeting. So if you have any individual questions, you could ask me as well. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Good luck. Nice. <laughs> it's always nice. Hi, everyone. I am Christy Carrero. I am the ninth grade administrator, so I will uh, get to work with all of you and your students over this year and the next four years, so I am really excited, honored, and privileged to be able to do that. So take a minute, stop me, introduce yourself, tell me about your child. I I really am looking forward to, to knowing everybody and working with them over the next four years. And I'm Cindy Rivera. I'm the uh, 
chair of the counseling department and I'm going to review a little bit what the school counselor's role is um, and what we do in that office down there, um, our whole team that that's down there. So I don't have all of your students, I only have a few students, but um, I am representing tonight. Um, you will all, I hope you know, on open house night, which is the 12th, I believe, you start a little bit earlier. Come, come at 6.15, you'll get an overview in the auditorium, it starts in the auditorium, and then you'll meet with your child's counselor for about 20 minutes before the, meet, before the evening starts to just hear about how they manage things. So you'll hear a lot of information on that night too, so. So I'm gonna, I, I reached out to, to some parents and said, if you, you know, are a new parent to New Cane High School, what are some of the things you wanna know? So I'm hoping that I'm gonna address all of those for those of you that aren't new, um, and you have anything to add to it, just let me know. Um, so I'm gonna start with attendance. Um, so uh, I guess a common question is, what do you do if your child is going to be absent, tardy, or needs to leave early? So Barbara LaPola in the attendance office is who you would contact, either call or email to let her know um, if your child's going to be absent, if they're going to be late, and if they need an early dismissal. Um, if, a, if your child needs to leave um, from school due to an illness or a, a, you know, a reason close, they need to go through the nurse. So you can't just come and pick them up and meet them outside. They need to go to the nurse's office and sign out through the nurse's office. Um, if they have an orthodontist appointment or are coming into school late, just have the orthodontist you know, give you that note, bring that in to Mrs. LaPola, make sure your child signs in with Mrs. LaPola, and then they can, they can go to class. And the same thing with early dismissal. If you know they're gonna be leaving for a certain reason, bring in that note, have your child bring it to Mrs. LaPola, and then they'll be signed out. Okay, anything else to add for that? Mm -mm. Uh, but but oh. kids are asking about coming in late and leaving early. So Right. For freshmen. So um, f there is an open campus, but it is for juniors and seniors. Um, so um, freshmen are not allowed to leave during the school day and come back. Um, if they do have the first period open, then they can sleep in and, and, and come into their next period, and there's no repercussions. But they are not allowed to leave and come back. So the open campus is only for juniors and seniors. And sometimes there is a closed campus, and that means that no students are able to leave during that time, freshmen or sophomores. So if you hear something like the campus is closed, that means that you know no student should be leaving the building. I'm sorry? So say um, if we have a big assembly, then the campus is typically closed. Pep rally, the campus is closed. When we do our um, safety drills, the campus is closed. So instances like that. Um, if they have a last freshman has last period free, can they leave early without us contacting the office? Yes, so that you really should contact the office and let them know that you are giving permission for them to leave. Sorry, I should say that the question was, if um, your child has last period free, does the parent need to call and contact? So that answer was yes. How about first period? If they have first period free, do we contact you guys to let you know they're coming in late? You do not, because they, won't have, they will not have been marked absent from their class. So if a student is, has first period open, a parent does not need to contact the school to let them know that they're sleeping in. Um, so for transportation, um, hopefully if you're dropping off your child, hopefully you've learned um, that you drive down and around and then drop them off and then exit. Um, so we just ask that you know you kind of follow that that line. Um, also, um, the buses, um, you know, what, the buses that leave right after school, but there is a late bus that's available to all students that leaves at 3:45. So um, if your child ever wants to stay after school for extra help or a club, that there is a late bus that leaves um, right at the same spot, but at uh, entrance to the cafeteria at 345. There also is no um, Ubers or Uber Eats allowed. Um, so just <laughs> something good to know. Um, the next item I wanted to tell you about was um, the testing policy, that there is a policy in place that students should not have to take more than than three tests in a day. So if they're finding that they have that, they um, can reach out to their teacher and ask um, for one of them to be moved. Um, their counselor also is a great uh, resource to help navigate that if, if they're not sure how to do that. Anything to add there? 
And we'll say, go talk to your teacher and see if you can have one of those moved. But uh, we can help them in terms of looking at their schedule, how uh, having them back up how they can possibly, which ones they can prepare best for early versus which ones um, it, it'll be delayed probably only by a di day or so. So it's not going to be taken in a week from now. It's be the next day. Um, a different item, one thing that I think is awesome here is there's a bag drop. So if your child is an athlete and has a huge athletic bag, um, there is a bag drop available to them uh, uh, in between basically the health rooms and the gymnasium. And I believe that gets locked at 830. So if they have an additional bag to their book bag, they can put it in there and then it gets reopened at the end of the day before sports practices. So that stays open till 830. Um, <clears throat> There is a new phone policy this year, so I'm sure Mr. Egan will talk about that more um, at the coffee, but um, that cell phones are, are no longer allowed in class to be used. So there'll be a cubby, and the teachers will ask that all of the phones be put in the cubby. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> And, and just for anyone who has a student, we do have, may have some issues with students who are hearing impaired that may absolutely need to have it. We will work through those kinds of right. things. So don't, don't assume that it's, you know, 100 percent, that, that if there is a plan in place where the student actually needs to have their phone, but need because mom wants to text them in the middle of the day is not it. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, also, so if you're wondering, like, how do you go about getting information? So Mr. Egan talked about the weekly update. I think definitely read through the weekly update. There's a lot of great information there. The website is updated daily. So, you know, if you're looking for something, it, chances are you can definitely find it on the website. Um, Twitter is a great place. I don't know if you follow New Canaan High School already, but I would, you know, recommend following um, us on Twitter. Um, and then, you know, I'm always a resource, so you can reach out to me anytime um, if there's any information that, that you need or are curious about. Um, in terms of how to help your child get involved, um, there is a club fair on October 4th that all freshmen um, will attend. And what happens is the cafeteria is transformed by all the clubs, and they have the ability to learn about the clubs that are offered and sign up for them you know, right there. So, you know, just start having that conversation with your child if they're not sure what, you know, what they want to do that just to be open minded and, and take advantage of the whole cafeteria because there's a lot of clubs down there. And there's there's a lot of awesome things that go on here that they might not even have thought about. Um, but tell them to give them a chance. And most of those clubs, they may meet after school, um, but they're designed so that kids can also do sports. So a lot of times the meetings are quick, short meetings for kids who have to get off to practice. Um, so, so they're always. So we always encourage kids to give at least one thing a try. Um, we don't want to overload them, but if they're really busy with sports and think they can't do something they want to do, um, they may still be able to. I mean, this does not apply towards the big club like drama or something like that where it requires such a huge time commitment but certainly some of the service clubs and things like that tend to meet quickly make plans move on to uh and the kids just sort of stop it it's a quick 20 minute meeting so that they know what's going on so it's a possibility and that was pretty much all of my hot topics but <laughs> okay go ahead Get to the red line <laughs> because of tournaments and out of town and whatever. So, so, so I, I can speak to part of that. When it's school related, meaning an athletic event or model UN goes away or something like that, does not count towards the total. It's school related, therefore, it is not an absence. So it doesn't count. So that doesn't count towards your total. Your total is based on absent for non-school related things. Uh, they're out ill, uh, something happened in the family and they can't get in, um, something like that. Um, so uh, children, does anyone know the answer? I'll quiz you, does anyone know the answer to that? <laughs> wrong, 10 is wrong, nine is wrong. <laughs> Six is wrong. <laughs> twelve. They are allowed twelve in their full-time classes per semester. PE and health, which only meet every other day, are allowed half as much. Six 
absences. So um, if for some reason your child is out ill for a long period of time, those be, and they're ex absolutely excused absences, we may ask for a doctor's note to document that. Uh, but at the mid-year, if they go over the 12, there's an appeals process. So you automatically will get these letters, even though you've called in, and even though it's documented all over the place that your child you know, has had surgery and are out for three weeks, you'll still get the letters automatically uh, sent. Um, and then during that appeals process, we review it, we forgive things we have documentation on right off the bat. If the child, it's a little more spotty than that, we might ask for an explanation for all the absences. And certainly if your child is cutting classes and, and not going to school for, for other reasons, um, we take all of that into account in reviewing the process. Oh, <laughs> I've got to answer those right here. So you're considering thinking about outside, like rowing and things like that? The swing. How do you? So, so those are still considered excused absences um, because they're not school related, but those are events that you would document with, the, with attendance office. And then when it, if you... They, they, they are. They will go in the 12th. But it's considered, so when it's time for the appeal, say they do lose credit due to that, then that is something that's, okay. yeah. Forgiven. Forgiven. Yes. Yeah. We're pretty, we're pretty generous. You have to really be abusing the policy to lose credit, so. So are, are the counselors the ones that are sort of looking at each individual student's schedule and monitoring the workload? I'm just, my, my son plays sports, and I'm all for the sports as time management and well-rounded, but So why don't I move into what we're here for, the counselors. <laughs> and yes, we, we do manage a lot of that. I mean, one of our biggest themes is balance uh, for these students. Students are often recommended for honors and, and high-level classes, which never takes into account their extracurricular activities. And we always have to look at that. Uh, so you have a student who, um, you know, maybe bright enough to be in all of those, but really loves their sport and wants to be part of that. And, the, and so we look at a good balance of things. Um, and so, yes, we're always asking those questions. We do count on parents to partner with us and let us know because we won't know that, that they're spending that kind of time. Um, we only see it in the absence report or in the grades from te or if teachers report to us that, gee, this person's very sleepy or something like that. So um, that's something that we'll always talk to you, the, welcome those calls from you that you're seeing that. Uh, Mr. Egan this year is, is going to be laying out a policy, it has laid out a policy to teachers um, around homework and that we're really striving to get an average of around half hour per sub, 20 to 25 in minutes per night per subject on average. There's certainly right before exam time, uh, mid, mid quarter, there are times where there is have a lot of testing going on, a lot of projects do. Kids are going to have, be spending more time on homework. <laughs> on average, we're not expecting that. So uh, if you're seeing them spend an exorbitant amount of time, and these are even kids in the highest level classes, the, uh, the kids who really belong in those classes should be able to tick those things off pretty quickly. The homework should not be so challenging to them that they're spending two hours on one subject every single night. There's something wrong in that situation. And that's something that you, you would have that conversation. The counselor, counselor will have those conversations with the student. And the students will have those conversations with their teachers. Are they spending too much time in one area? We often see that, particularly freshmen, when they go to, when the teacher asks them to outline a chapter. And so many kids start rewriting the entire chapter rather than some very serious bulleting and, and making quick notes and things. So they can work very closely with their teachers on what to expect and how to do it the way the teacher is asking them to do it because teachers are not expecting them to rewrite a chapter. It's to get those main, main notes down, make sure they've read it and can go back to it. So study skills are a big part of what we work on with kids in this first year 
so that they understand how to do their homework efficiently um, so that they're moving through it. So that it's a big, sure. what we do as counselors. Does that answer the question? It is a big promotion from our side. And we've asked the teachers to even tell kids, this is how much time I expect you to spend on this, um, and to post that so that um, you will be, ab be able to have those conversations. Um, because kids do tend to, um, some kids are really anxious and spend a lot of time on homework. It's just not as necessary that they do the amount that they're doing. So there are eight counselors in our, our office. Um, we also have two psychologists, two social workers, and a college and career center. Uh, the registrar who manages our records, also in that suite. So uh, we have quite a few people <laughs> to access. Your child has all been assigned a counselor. If you've been here before, you probably have the same counselor uh, as you've had before. Um, so, you know, we tend to get to know the families as you're, you're traveling through. How many here are our old, count, our old parents <laughs> have been to have older kids here? <laughs> okay, good. So you get that. <laughs> you're so old. So, um, so that's, you know, that's something that's, that's helpful. You'll see uh, the same patterns each year. And, and counselors, we have... We meet with kids individually, but we also have programs each year because we're looking at kids at where they are developmentally as freshmen, 13, 14 year olds, where they should be and moving them forward to the next level. So in freshman year, we're talking to them about how they study best, how they learn best. We'll be going into classrooms in November uh, around this kind of program. We'll get them introduced to thinking about that and reflecting on who they are as a learner and how they should study that, that goes along with their own strengths. Um, we also meet with them one-on-one -on -one starting November and December to review how things are going already. And uh, we put together a four-year plan for them based on goals and interests that they're starting to even think about. That, that certainly changes as they're taking different courses and realizing what they, they like. Um, we use, you know, kids f suddenly discover a, a love for science or uh, graphic design or uh, engineering or any writing, anything that we can then help nav them to navigate how else they can, can promote those strengths or explore those strengths. Um, as they go through high school. So we start there and we'll move forward. You'll hear a lot more about this on Back to School Night, but um, we provide that program. Every year we're also working with the kids on their schedules for the next year. Uh, so we look at if they're showing strength in a certain area, what else they can do, how they, we might change their pathway based on that area. So we're always looking at those things. Then we're working with kids individually as the issues arise. So that would certainly be uh, you're seeing a tired child at home you're seeing someone who is not connecting well in a certain classroom and what can we do to help them navigate uh, any difficulties they're having in a classroom at, at that point um, we don't tend to jump to switch them out or change their schedule early on because at this point they're still just settling in they don't they haven't even had a week worth of classes yet so they don't really know what they like and they don't like um, I think for a lot of kids jumping into honors classes for the first time that or higher level classes uh, it might be a little scary 
to begin with. And so I have some kids who panic and, and want to change their schedules right away. Generally, we try to hold off for a few weeks and say, let's check it out. Let's see how it's going. In the same way, the electives are important for kids to discover interests that they never thought they might have. Um, so we're, we're always opening. The electives tend to really show pathways. Um, in the creative arts or the hands-on uh, experiences so they can see what, what they're thinking about those things. So you'll see us encouraging them to explore a lot this year. It's all about them thinking about where they, what, what they're interested in. So we're looking at them academically and personally. Um, we'll be encouraging them to get involved uh, to try things in that way as well. Um, but again, looking at the balance. If it's, to, you know, we don't need kids to do, um, you know, five clubs, three sports, community service, just to show themselves and then take you know five honors classes because that's what they think they have to do. It's really not the pathway towards a good um, outcome towards college. The, the pathway is towards exploring where your strengths are and exploring those and expanding on those as you go through. So this year is exploring and then as we go through it's narrowing uh, to do less actually um, as they go through. So we'll do a lot of that. The transition for you is a little different in the sense of where you were super involved, planning, negotiating, leading the, leading the way. We're going to ask you to step back gradually, maybe not this week, maybe not this month, but as the years go on to try to get them to, to be the leader in all of this. So they're having trouble with a teacher the first thing to for you to say to them is make, a, make a, an appointment with them one-on-one -on -one so they can talk with their teacher about what's happening, what they're scared about, what they feel about the class, uh, what they're having trouble with academically, and see what the teacher says. If that's not working well f to, for getting answers or you have a ninth grade boy who doesn't like to do those things, <laughs> oftentimes, girls are generally pretty good at this, but. Um, they can see us and we can help them with the words to say and how to say it rather than you know saying you just don't know how to teach maybe we can find a better way <laughs> to uh, give them the right answer to, to, to say I'm not learning you know I'm having trouble with understanding what you're saying can you teach it in a different way to me is there a different way to approach this in the same way if you're still feeling that frustration in your, your child seems to be coming home just saying, I don't know, everyone's getting it and I don't get it, or the teacher just hates me and that's why. Um, it's a good time for you to connect with the teacher via email and say, you know, my child's struggling, what are you seeing in the classroom? What, what are the issues? And oftentimes the teachers will say, you know, they can, they can explain it in a way that your child isn't seeing that. It's a different perspective of what they're trying to get the child to, to get across. This often happens in the M3 level math kids will come home. They're not teaching it. They're, they're just expecting us to learn it on our own. Yes, that's the issue with M3 math, is that they want you to think it through before they give you the answer. They want you to process it through. So you'll hear that, and so you want to question it a little bit before we jump to the conclusion that this teacher acts, absolutely hates your child and doesn't teach. So, um, so I do hear it a lot. So. Um, so we work through all those things. So the communication lines should be wide open. If we, uh, first with your child, then if you need to get some clarification from teachers, absolutely email the teachers to get some sense of it. If you're seeing it in a lot of places, that's where the counselor really should be involved as to what's going on that this child is not settling in well and they're having some real issues. Then uh, certainly always connect with the, the counselor as well. Um, we have walk-in times for the kids uh, every lunch period, first and second lunch. They can come to counselors. To, 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 they don't need to make an appointment. Otherwise, we ask them to make an appointment by seeing um, the Mrs. Posha in the, in the, who's our guidance secretary. She has our schedules. The kids could just walk in, see when we're available, make a quick appointment. Uh, so that'll happen uh, very quickly. Um, freshmen this year, uh, you all... Uh, 
for those of you who have older children, that the distribution of courses is changing slightly this year. Connecticut state laws have changed, so the requirement has gone from 23 credits to graduate to 25 credits to graduate. So kids may, whatever the older siblings were able to have for free periods, may be slightly less for the freshmen. Um, we're seeing most kids graduate with close to 25 or over 25 credits already, but we're going to have to plan that a little more cl clearly and closely uh, for, for this class. The distribution is different in the sense of we still ask the kids for the five core classes, but they will be categorized humanities and STEM classes, and they'll be falling within those. And for the first time, world language one year is required. Almost 95% of our students take at least one year, 99% take at least one year of world language, so that hasn't really phased us, but we'll just have that in there. And it is considered under the humanities category, too, as well. So we are putting together how that distribution looks. And so back to oh, for Open House, you should have that, and we'll make sure we'll get that to you. Um, but that's just a, a little bit of a difference. Um, Power School is something that you'll be looking at, right? Seeing how kids are doing. Are you guys used to using that from SACS? Okay, so you know that the grades change minute by minute, so the kids' GPAs change minute by minute. Um, and so you just have to be really careful when looking at that not to look at the grades. So those grades are so not final that there's no, you know, by the quarter there are class participation grades added in and uh, homework grades added in. and in the early part, you're just seeing tests and quizzes and grades going up and down. And you really want to click in to see if they're missing tests, they're missing homework. Those are the things you want to be looking for, not the overall grades just yet. It's, we really only worry about the grades as they get co closer to the quarter when grades are really much more official. So um, don't panic on it. Don't look at it five times a day. Uh, the kids have some app that pings them every time their GPA changes. It adds to the anxiety like nothing else. And we've tried to take it away from kids so that they can't see it, and then they just panic because they can't see it. So um, I, w we're trying to solve that problem, but it would be helpful if you also were calm about that and, and not texting them every time you see their GPA change, and then they're running in to see us because their GPA changed. So um, it, it, does, it is maddening. And so, and as a parent, it'll be maddening. So you just want to dig down, take it slowly, take it carefully. And if you see a pattern, we certainly want to be involved. Uh, but the day-to-day, -day, uh, don't panic about that. It should be on the top of their matrix schedule. So, yes, not always clear on the app there. So, yeah. Um, yes, and is it true they all the teachers communicate on this new? I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Schoology. 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 Okay, and they they post the homework on the Schoology. Are all of the teachers on board with that, or will there be you know some don't, some do? So, so this, this is a transition year, so the goal is throughout the year that we'll get there. So, um, yep, but I would say for now, like open house would be the, you know, a great time to just, the teacher should be saying it to you at open house where their homework will be posted and, and how you can access that. But if for some reason it's not said, that's the great place to ask. And hopefully next year we have this conversation and we can say yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and, and that'll, that'll be, be, in the past, kids, every teacher had a different way for kids to access different websites and different models of how they were tracking kids. And the point of Schoology is that there will be one model for kids to, to, and for you, to figure, find that information. Yeah. Questions? Um, you guys mentioned about the changes in the schedule. Is that humanities versus that? Is that only for the ninth graders? It doesn't apply to the others? And then second part is how does it 
Sure. So part of the change, it, um, most of this only affects freshmen, but PE and health does change a little bit because what changed is from 1.5 credits in PE and 0.5 credits in health is now one in one credits. So we had to provide more health and less PE in order to do that. So every year kids will have one semester with health and one semester with PE. And throughout the four years, that's what it will look like. So we've made that transition with the upperclassmen already. Um, in the past, it was full year PE for freshmen and sophomores and then moved to half year in junior and senior year. So now every year it'll be half year PE, half year health, alternate days, both times. So, um, so that's where we are with that at this point. Okay. Is there another part to that question? I forget now. Okay, thanks. Other questions? They, the, the question was, if you have a sport and they're work, doing all that work, do they also do PE? Yes, they do. PE state is a state requirement uh, in the public school district. So if you came from a private school setting, well, that doesn't exist, but it was nice. But, um, but in the public school setting, yes, it's required. Yes, yes, the question was on power school quarter one, quarter two, exam one, semester grade. What does all those initials at the top uh, of what they're looking at? Good so good question. So the exams, those are the midterms, E1, and then E2 would be final exams at the end of the year, S1 and S2, semester one, semester two, which the semester grade is the only thing that appears on the transcript for the student in the final analysis. Quarter grades or exams do not, but everything's averaged into that. Correct. So uh, the questions around when mid-year exams are, it's not mid-quarter, mid, mid, the quarter ends approximately end of October, beginning of November. That's the end of quarter one, quarter two begins. Exams are uh, around Martin Luther King in late January, around that third week in January. And then the second semester starts right after that. Um, and then final exams are in June. Yes. Also, just going to dovetail on that. On um, there is a there's a talk on Thursday, December twelfth, fifth at nine thirty here for midterm prep study study strategies. So, if you want to add to that, it's Thursday, December fifth, I believe, right? at nine thirty. Yeah, that's one of the PFA presentations. Yeah, that's where all the department chairs will be here to talk about their subject area and how, uh, what to expect for the midterm exams and how to prepare for them. How to help your child prepare for them. You're not taking them. Any others? Well, I hope to see you all at um, back to school night. Open, how do we call it? Open house? Back I think to open school. house. Open house. <laughs> I've been to many different schools, so thank you very much, and any questions, we're glad to answer them. Wrapping it up. So thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, any more questions? It's, that's what we're here for. But um, if you have joined hot off the presses, you will be the first to get them. Um, we have our future begins here. Car magnets, for those that are members and have made a donation to the PFA, you can stop by. Um, thank you again. Have a great year.